in programming, the filtering is a pretty common task. At some point, you will have to filter something out based on a condition. In the previous episode, we talked about predicates. Predicates can be used as such conditions for the filtering process. So in order to understand the filtering in depth, let's start by creating our own filtering function and let's see what the built-in filter array method provides us in order to simplify the whole development experience. So let me go ahead and paste some dummy data. So this is a list of some computer scientists along with the, the year in which they were born. And we will try to filter this collection based on different conditions. So how we could approach this? So we have the first uh, collection. The, it's an array of objects. And each object is a name along with the, the year. And as a result, we want to also have an array. But we must construct it by filtering the first array, of course. What we need is to first go over this first array and find those elements that fit the condition, a condition which we haven't defined yet. So that's pretty much it. That's, that's pretty easy. It's a simple for loop. And we can say item of people. And now we have to define the condition. So let's say, let's find all the people that were born after the Second World War. So born after the war. And this if will match those items, which means that we can now add those items to the result. And finally, we need to display the result. Let's see if it works. It seems to work. Let's analyze what happens here. So there are three things that we need to do in order to filter a given array. The first one is to prepare the place where we will store the result. So we need to explicitly say where the result is located. In our case, it's a result variable. It's a variable called result. The second thing is that we need to iterate over the array. Uh, and look at each item. And then the third element, the third thing, important thing for filtering is to define the condition. And once we have one item, to uh, apply the condition to this item, we need to check if this item fulfills the condition. And if it does, we add this item to our result. So three things. Result, constructing the result by hand, applying or iterating over the array, and defining the condition. But programming is about creating abstractions and about generalizing things. So let's try to make it more general, this approach. Let me fold this in. And let's start with the clean slate. So let's copy just the array. So let's take small steps. And the first step would be to create a function. So instead of writing the for loop each time with the condition and with the with defining the variable, let's wrap it into a function. And let's call this function filter. So at the beginning, this uh, function will not take any arguments. Everything will be defined explicitly in the body of the function. So let's leave it like that. Let's copy the previous block of code. And let's return the result and let's run the function. Luckily, we have the same result. But this function is not yet general. We just wrap the code into the function, but it doesn't really help us that much. So it would be better to pass the array, the input, as a parameter, right? So let's define this as a collection. And here we will go over that collection, which is now general. We don't really know what's in that collection or we don't want to know what's in that collection. We just want to get, we just want to be sure that this is a collection that we can iterate over. And 
This means that when we run this function, so let's extract this here to a variable, and here we'll, we'll be just printing it. So it means that now we have to pass the actual data, which is people, the, the variable people, which we defined at the beginning. So now if we run it, we should get the same result. But the problem is that we have now the condition which is connected or related to the people array. Because when we take the item into our hand, let's say, uh, we are extracting the born field from it. And this only exists. And this born field may exist on some collections, but some other may not. So this is tightly related to the people we have to generalize it as well. And we say that this line over here is coupled with the collection we are iterating over. So what we can do is that we could extract the condition as well, right? So this if, we can just put it as a parameter. And because we say it's a, it's a condition, this is, this is a predicate. Because everything that it's in as a parameter to if must return true or false. So we can just get rid of this whole specific thing and just say predicate. This predicate must know what is the input on which item it should uh, act upon. So we just need to pass it the item. So now we know that the predicate is a function that's being passed. So we transform our filter function, normal function, let's say, into a higher order function, because now it takes a predicate, which means it takes a function and a collection. Now it's pretty general, and we can now define our predicate here, and let's say, born after the war, the second war, P for the predicate, and let's define it. So as before, it's item and we are extracting the born field. We are defining after the war date and we will pass this as the parameter to our own filter function. And let's see if it works. It seems to work. So let's change the dates. So 55, it works. So now the filter is pretty general and we don't have to, whenever we want to filter something, we don't have to bother with constructing the result. We don't have to bother with iterating over uh, a given collection and we don't have to bother with defining how the condition is applied to each item because this is extracted and it's passed to this filter function from outside. Because the operation of filtering is so common, Filter is part of the language, of the JavaScript language. And it's defined, this function which we build over here. The function we defined here is defined as a method on the array object. So it means that instead of, so instead of passing both the predicate and the array and, the, and a collection to it, we can just take the collection or we want to work on and we can execute the filter method directly on it. So we can just say filter and we can pass just the predicate, the condition, which will define how to, which items should be filtered. And if we run this, so let's do it as an R2 and let's run it. We still have the same result. So let's change the predicate and now it's, longer or shorter depending on, on the condition. So let's make some notes now. So the first note would be to say that the filter method in JavaScript is used to extract elements based on a condition which is provided as a predicate, as input for to this uh, function. We use predicates to define conditions for the whole filtering process. In other words, predicates are used to say if a uh, if an item should be kept in the result or not. As we said at the beginning, filtering is a very common, it's a very common thing in programming. 
And instead of doing it by hand, so whenever you find that you are iterating and then doing some ifs on each item, it means that maybe you should do it using the filter method from the array object. That's all for today. See you next time.